increasing farm income and improving water quality in the Chesapeake Bay watershed. With streamside livestock exclusion, everybody wins. The bay starts right here, right here on this farm with the springs that feed the tributaries, that feed the rivers, that come down to the Shenandoah, to the Potomac, and down to the, to the bay. Obviously downstream for me is the Chesapeake Bay, and that's a hot issue. People always ask me, how is the bay doing? Well, the bay has many problems, one of which is agriculture. If we all do a little, it'll go a long ways to improve the bay. Well, the bay's water quality is only as good as the water that's feeding it. And so if we really want to clean up our streams, we have to get the livestock out. When cattle are not kept out of the streams, everybody loses. Farmers lose productivity and profit, and cattle lose health and dirty water. Streams lose the ability to support fish and wildlife. The Chesapeake Bay loses a chance to recover. When cattle are kept out of the streams, well, everybody wins with streamside livestock exclusion. Farmers win more productive, healthier farms, and cattle win access to clean water. Streams win a stable habitat for fish and wildlife. The Chesapeake Bay wins a chance to recover. Everybody wins, for sure. We've got the cattle out of the stream. We've got growth, as you can probably see in the background, hopefully, uh, that's come a year later. Uh, cattle have adapted very well. If I gave them access to the creek, I know where they'll drink their water. It'll be out of the water because it's, it's cleaner, cooler, better water, and they tell you that. I needed cross fencing anyway. So the management of groups of cattle with separate water systems, uh, keeping the bulls separate from the heifers, keeping wean calves separate from mamas, whatever the management scheme was, everything just sort of molded together. Farmers win. So I'm not going to tell that farmer what he needs to do. I want them to feel like I'm trying to guide them in a direction to where their farm can be more profitable. Because a lot of times it goes hand in hand. Most everything we do in the long run, it can be environmentally friendly and economically beneficial. Livestock wins. In the summertime temperatures, Things like leptospirosis, things like E. coli can go ahead and, and stay in those ponds, you know, throughout the summer. And essentially, in a running water situation, if we have a disease problem in our herd, it compromises the herd downstream. And if we have a disease problem in a herd upstream, we're compromised. You know, if, if we're trying to run a farm and uh, prevent new diseases from entering, it's not a wise idea to have, to have um, cattle in those streams and brooks. Fencing livestock out of the creeks is the right thing to do. It's good for your farm, it's good for the environment, and it's good for your bottom line. We decided to apply for the programs that were available to uh, fence the cattle out because it was just so obvious that they were destroying the stream banks and the silt and the sediment was building up in the creeks. Uh, once it's up, the maintenance is minimal and it has, and it has not been difficult for us to, uh, to adhere to the program at all. The farmer wins, the, the livestock win, Farmers usually need more water distributed throughout their farm, not just right at the stream. And so we could get better grazing distribution of the whole farm if we can have water sources throughout that farm. And I can't think of a better template to design a grazing system than using your streams as your dividers. And there's many programs that landowners and farmers can enroll in to achieve cleaner water, better grazing distribution, healthier livestock, and a better environment. The farmers win, the cattle win, the streams win, and the bay win. Well, TMDL stands for total maximum daily load. 
And what that means is how much of a pollutant a stream can assimilate and not violate the water quality standard. And those water bodies that don't meet the state water quality standards end up on a list. And it's often referred to as an impaired waters list. So in Virginia, most of our 70% of our TMDLs are due to bacteria. Bacteria levels in our streams are too high. We also have a lot of sediment TMDL issues because aquatic life impairments. If we can work in a lot of these smaller headwater streams and implement best management practices, work with landowners, we've seen the violation rates go down to the point that in some cases they've been reduced 40 or 50 percent and now we're getting some of these streams off the dirty waters list, the impaired waters list. Everybody wins. In no way do we need to recommend anything that's going to put farmers out of business. Most farmers we work with are good stewards of their land because they require their land to produce well in order for them to make a good living. We, we really do need to hang on to the farmland we have. It, it is a great natural filter. Healthy, well-managed farms that are thriving in the valley are our best friend. They really are. They're providing so many environmental benefits. The filtering, the buffers, the cooling of the water, just all sorts of good things, but what we need are good managed farms. If a farmer wants to exclude their livestock from a hydric feature, there are funds available to help them do it. This is something that the public obviously wants very much because there's so much money involved with this. There's, they're, they're putting a lot of money out there we provide the technical assistance to get it done. We design the projects with the farmer. Everybody knows how much money we think it's gonna cost and how much they're gonna get reimbursed. And you have a laid out plan that the farmer can see what these practices are gonna look like on the ground. And then our conservation specialists talk about funding options through the state program as well as the federal program. Now, in addition to getting reimbursed for the actual practices, the fencing, the livestock crossings, the watering systems, the trees. Uh, some programs will even pay rent for the footprint that is actually fenced out from the livestock. There's a lot of options now. There's a lot of um, variety if you do need cost share money to get some things done. As a nonprofit employee, you know, I'm working on the whole umbrella. You know, I can talk to folks about EQIP, about CREP, I can talk to them about the state BMP, or about other nonprofits that are offering some flexible fencing programs. Once a lot of times farmers have it installed, I have yet to hear one complain as far as I wish I had never done it. It's I wish, boy, I, well, I don't know why I didn't think I would do it sooner. It's been a good practice to put into play, and I'm benefiting from it. We work with a lot of farmers in the county here, and it's always a pleasure. Let's, let's talk about, see what you've got there. See what we can do. The water wins, wildlife wins, everybody wins. Presented by the Downstream Project, promoting natural resource conservation by stimulating awareness, action, and alliances through visual arts and technology. In-depth interviews and educational resources on streamside livestock exclusion are available on the web at the downstreamproject.org.